we have another integral to complete. And the fact that we have a square root of one minus x squared in this integral suggests that we are going to use a trigonometric substitution. Although I feel like I should throw in the disclaimer that it is typically a good idea to make sure that a simple u substitution isn't going to work for this integral. Notice that if we make u one minus x squared, we get du is negative two x dx. And while this might look kind of promising, and if there was just an x instead of an x squared up here in the numerator, this u substitution would work pretty quickly. But unfortunately, it looks like this is not going to work. So we can move it out of here and we can move on with our trig substitution. It looks like it has this first form here using a equals one. So I'm gonna get rid of the rest of this information and we can say that our trig substitution is going to be x equals the sine of theta. That makes dx cosine of theta. And while in the last video I set up a reference triangle and told you a bunch of information, this time why don't we just focus on the integral and see what happens. The numerator has an x squared in it, and since x is sine of theta, x squared is going to be sine squared theta. The denominator has a 1 minus x squared, which turns into a 1 minus sine squared theta. And don't forget your dx. dx in this case is cosine of theta d theta. Now here's where your trig skills come into play. You might notice that there's a fundamental trig identity right here. 1 minus sine squared theta is cosine squared theta. Simplifying by taking a square root of cosine squared just gives us cosine theta. Well, okay, technically it gives us the absolute value of cosine. But again, we don't have any limits on x, we don't have any limits on theta, so we can't determine where cosine is positive and where cosine is negative, and we want to keep going with this problem. So we want to assume that cosine of theta is positive. What that then allows us to do is simply cancel the absolute value of cosine with the cosine, and we are left with sine squared theta d theta as our integral. And while sine squared of theta isn't something you can integrate in that form, you can recall that there's an identity. It's a rewritten version of one of the double angle identities. And just put this on your list of things to remember. Uh, there's also a similar one for cosine squared theta. Because we're going to use this relatively frequently whenever we're trying to integrate sine squared or cosine squared. Okay, pulling the one half out and integrating. Notice we're integrating with respect to theta. And for reasons I hope to explain here momentarily, I'm going to use a trig identity to rewrite one half sine of two theta as simply cosine theta sine theta. Okay, as usual with these trigonometric substitutions, we get ourselves an answer in terms of theta, but you'll remember that our original integral was in terms of x, so we want our answer to be in terms of x. To get this answer in terms of x, let's go back and look at what our original substitution was. You'll notice that it was x equals the sine of theta. Let's come back here and take a look at that. We can say a couple of things. One thing that we can say is that if we wanted to draw a picture involving this angle theta, theta, and we're told that sine of theta equals x, we need to recall that the sine of an angle is the opposite side over the hypotenuse. So now in this triangle, the sine of this angle is x over 1, which is x. Okay, great. Now a little bit of Pythagorean theorem tells us that the length of this side is the square root of 1 minus x squared. Okay, why did I just tell you that? If we go back to our answer and notice that we have a sine of theta in it, this over here tells us that sine of theta equals x. That's great because we want this answer in terms of x. Well, how do we get rid of this cosine theta and replace it with some function of x? Well, that's what we use the reference triangle for. If we look at this reference triangle and ask what is cosine of theta, cosine is just the adjacent over the hypotenuse. So cosine of theta is the square root of 1 minus x squared. Okay, so so far we're going to replace our sine of theta with x and our cosine of theta with the square root of 1 minus x squared. Theta itself we can replace by looking back at this original substitution. Solving it for theta gives us theta equals the inverse sine of x, and that we can plug in for theta over here. This is looking a little bit messy, but we're going to write down our final answer right now. Making all of those substitutions gives us the answer that we're looking for. That is it. Box it up. I'm going to zoom out. Now you'll notice that one thing I did in the process is I rewrote sine of 2 theta in terms of cosine and sine of just theta. The reason I did that is because these double angles don't show up in these reference triangles. So as a general rule, it's best to write our answer in terms of single thetas, not say two thetas. Okay, I think more practice is going to help, so let's check out the next video.